Good morning all. Sorry. <laughs> uh good evening everyone today we are here for a uh, session about spices behind uh, behind screen and understanding the seasoning so tomorrow uh, today speaker is mr harmandeep singh uh, food technologist with 8 8 years of experience in r&d and regulatory affairs specialized in spices and seasoning Uh, he started his career with uh, Spara Spices and worked with companies like Sigma, Synthetic Industry, Capital Foods, and presently working with Food Service India, Private Limited, that's a sister concern of VKL Food Solution Enterprises, Mumbai, as a manager, product development. So here upon I call Mr. Parmandi Singh to. Start with this today's session. Hello, sir. How are you all? How are you today? Yeah, hi, hi, Prabhu. Yeah. Good evening. I'm good. How are you today, sir? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, what weather at you? Yes, uh, it's Mumbai, right? Yes, yes, right. So it's uh, raining there. Yeah, it's a rain over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, sir, can you uh, brief about your summarize brief about your past experience in this in the food industry yes yes uh, so i have completed my uh, food technology uh, in, uh, from amritsar university and i have started my career uh, with paras spices uh, so i when i started my career with paras spices i was in the operations uh, department so then i moved to uh, uh, you know r and d and uh, i worked with the uh, semega Semega uh, is uh, uh, you know the sister concern company of uh, Synthite Industries. So they are into the seasoning and spices and the culinary products, and uh, of course the oleo resins. We everybody knows about it. And uh, then I moved to uh, Capital Foods. I worked uh, uh, for a short time in uh, Capital Foods in Mumbai itself, and uh, I was taking care of the research and development over there as well. And then I moved to uh, VKL. So from okay. week, and with Vikel, I am around uh, two and a half years. I am uh, with this company now, taking care of the development part. Yes, that's uh, very great to know your uh, journey. So let's start with this session. I guess uh, uh, can you share the screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hope it's uh, visible. Yeah. Yeah, it's visible and quite hard. So I will turn off my webcam so it will be no disturbance to you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just give me a minute. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Uh, so uh, today we are going to talk about about uh, the spices and the seasoning uh, uh, seasoning because everybody knows about the seasoning, but uh, uh, we always have you know certain perceptions in our mind that uh, what things can be made, how it it is getting manufactured, how spices are there, how we can you know make uh, best use of the spices. So uh, there are multiple uh, things are there. So. i hope i'll be able to clear uh, you know the doubts uh, of uh, the viewers uh, so this is a uh, knowledge sharing session so uh, whatever the things which uh, i have you know learned with my experience from the industries okay so that i am going to discuss uh, with you guys today uh, so this is a content which we are going to uh, discuss today uh, so first we will be uh, talking about what are the spices what are the spices and what are the seasonings how we define that uh, and what are the you know what are the states those are uh, uh, you know really growing the spices and how it is getting uh, distributed to entire india so you will be able to understand the glimpse of it and uh, the second uh, the third point is the volatile oil uh, in the spices we know that uh, volatile oil is present in the spices but how it it works in the spices what are the you know uh, technical factors of the uh, volatile oil which gives uh, you know the flavor aroma we are going to talk about that and what are the spices applications what applications we use generally and what are the usage 
of that and uh, same with the seasoning so seasoning we are going to discuss what all the applications and usage uh, we are going to uh, uh, discuss and then the sensory evaluation so there are whenever i do the uh, session uh, with the, you know with my team also so uh, they always uh, there is a always long discussion on the sensory evaluation that how when how they can you know evaluate the product whatever they are getting in the market and when they are uh, getting some a product from uh, you know some other company so how they can uh, really understand so we are going to discuss about the two levels so what are the two levels because you know from going from one level to two le level two it, it takes you know certain years of experience then you will be able to understand in the seasoning and spices and the uh, next is the industrial process so what is the generic process which we are going to discuss and the quality parameters and the testing methods uh, what we do in the seasoning and spices and uh, what are the microbiological parameters what testing we have to do externally uh, as per the fssai and uh, what is the compatible packaging material uh, for the seasoning and the spices and what are the advantages of the compatible packaging material right and the last is uh, the shelf life how we determine the shelf life and how we define the shelf life on the product so this is a very again a, a common uh, thing which uh, many people ask that when when they are defining the shelf life what things uh, they have to do to define the shelf life of any other product <clears throat> so let's uh, begin with the session so what are the spices and the seasonings uh, when we talk about uh, the definition so spices uh, is aromatic seeds okay it could be the seeds it could be the bird it could be the berry it could be the root it could be the bark as you as you see in the definition seed like how it is cumin cumin is a seed okay then how we are getting the aromatic seed which is a cumin uh, bud buds we are getting of the plant which is the clove and berries we are getting which is the pepper so pepper uh, when you see when it is a, it is with the plant it is not hard like this after the processing only it will become as a hard otherwise it is a berry it's very soft in texture right and ginger as a root and cinnamon as a bark so entire plant uh, parts are getting used uh, uh, for the spices so these are the uh, the primary used of the spices flavoring coloring preservative uh, preservation of the food so these are the uh, you know primary uh, uh, we can say the usage how we are doing you imagine your food without spices you cannot imagine it's it's very difficult uh, you cannot imagine you know the especially the indian food without these kind of spices if you go to europe your Euro, european countries or if you go to western america there they will use only salt and pepper on and certain uh, you know the uh, red paprika and then they will garnish the things uh, but in especially in the indian food it's uh, it's completely different it's really different than the, uh, than that so spices uh, are uh, different from the herbs okay herbs are uh, generally we define the herbs as a leaf or the plant uh, of the plant which we use for the garnishing like the mint leaves like the coriander so that is uh, which we use for the uh, garnishing and herbs also comes as a, like thymes we use we use the oregano we use the rosemary so these also comes under the herbs category and what are the seasonings so when we talk about the seasoning seasonings are uh, nothing but it's a blend of the salt sugar and spices and condiments so this is the structure of the seasoning that uh, any seasoning will be having these kind of components uh, which will give uh, give you the uh, you know the flavor to your food dishes and enhance the flavor the taste or the aroma of your food product so it will be some seasoning will be having the herbs in, inside that you can see the visuals some seasoning will be having the vinegar inside that some seasoning will be having the some flavoring substances which will give you know the uh, which will give the enhancement to their uh, to the end applications so multiple kind of seasonings are there in the market and uh, uh, we very often use the seasonings in our daily life we will discuss in the next slides so this is a spice map of india uh, so when we talk about in the journal so where all spices are grown okay this i have taken from the spice board website uh, so where they are saying that uh, spices are grown in which uh, states 
which uh, what kind of spices are grown for example ginger uh, and cardamom is very common is uh, is very common in tamil nadu is a common in west bengal cardamom is uh, common in west bengal cardamom is also common in uh, uh, kerala okay uh, in the south india also it is available same goes with the coriander coriander is available in rajasthan up uttaranchal cumin is available in gujarat many people will be knowing cumin uh, gujarat is the hub of the cumin gujarat is the hub of onion and garlic okay there are certain uh, cities are there where the production of these two uh, uh, two or three ingredients are on the very higher side again the fennel we will get in the gujarat rajasthan okay the fennel greek we will get it in the uh, uh, up rajasthan and gujarat celery we will get it in the punjab up clove is uh, available in karnataka and uh, tamil nadu and kerala okay nutmeg and mace is is a one plant uh, it's available in the uh, kerala tamil nadu and karnataka then vanilla is there uh, vanilla is also a very uh, you know the ingredient very important ingredient which we use in the seasonings and uh, uh, which we use in the many of the products uh, to give the distinguished flavor so it, it is available in the kerala karnataka tamil nadu garlic as i was telling it is available in the multiple states uh, up gujarat karnataka uh, bihar chatisgarh everywhere it is available right so this is the uh, uh, you know the spices which are uh, generic and available uh, in pan india chillies yeah chillies are very common uh, chillies are available uh, especially in karnataka and uh, uh, this andhra pradesh area everybody knows that guntur is a hub of the chilli okay so uh, there we you will get the multiple varieties of chilli and uh, uh, you will get different price range also in the chillies so moving to the next uh, so this is about the volatile oil uh, what is volatile oil in spices when we talk about the volatile oil what exactly it is and how it plays a role in spices so volatile oil are the oils contained in almost every whole spices including the including the leaf seed stem root or bark whatever part you take over the plant it is available everywhere uh, only the percentage vary in every uh, spice of that right if if it is coming from the uh, same plant but still uh, the percentage will vary <clears throat> and uh, volatile oil are having the several hundred chemical compounds uh, when we combine each other it's a it's a mixture of uh, uh, it, it's a mixture of the spices which gives uh, you know the flavor and aroma to the uh, to the spice so that is called the bo of the product in in short so major majority the vo is a stored always it will be there in the whole form until unless you are not breaking it it will not evaporate but still in the whole form also it will evaporate gradually but uh, but when when you are breaking the uh, any breaking the spices you are actually increasing the surface area of the product so whenever you are increasing the surface area of the product you are increasing the risk of the product okay so when you are increasing the surface area the vo is getting evaporated vo will get released so that's why uh, we say that whenever we are doing the grinding we we don't have to do the harsh grinding because the vo loss will happen more in terms of harsh grinding right we will uh, cover that in the next slides uh, vo uh, aroma and flavor is associated with the herbs and spices are due to the vo compound as we, as we discussed so there are functional groups are present inside this uh, so what what is a vo exactly there are some functional groups uh, these are uh, aldehydes ketones alcohols esters okay so these things are present in the spices these are the chemical compounds chemical functional groups which gives the uh, aroma and the flavor of the to the spice uh, we know that if we are closing our eye and uh, we are uh, uh, we are let's say uh, you know trying to smell Uh, pepper so we know that how pepper smells if we try to smell uh, green cardamom we know that how green cardamom smells how cumin smells because it is having their uh, certain chemical compounds which uh, these are the organic compounds which are present in the product so that only will give the distinguished flavor to the spice for example uh, in cinnamon there is aldehyde which uh, determines the flavor of cinnamon 
okay in uh, in cumin there is a cumulin in uh, in clove it's it's a eugenol uh, that gives the distinguished flavor in basil also it's a eugenol compound which gives the flavor to the uh, spice so we will be able to understand what exactly this uh, uh, spice is right so moving to the next uh, this is the average uh, uh, vo percentage in spices so i just uh, taken uh, this considering uh, considering not the fssa standard but fssa says that uh, your vo should be uh, you know minimum should be uh, this much uh, when you are selling something in the market but that is not the standard what i am taken has what products are available in the market uh, that is having the average vo this percentage for example the carom seeds like the ajwain ajwain is having around 5% of uh, uh, volatile oil okay pepper pepper is having around 3% of uh, volatile oil average and uh, pepper is also contain the pepperin content which uh, uh, which gives the you know the spiciness to the pepper uh, that is around 5 uh, 5 to 5.2% it is um, it is available in the product and si similar with the white pepper in turmeric it is a curcumin uh, which we which is the most critical uh, you know the uh, parameter which we are checking in the turmeric because turmeric is of course we are adding for the flavoring as well as for the coloring of the product okay so curcumin which we are checking that is uh, that is in the turmeric only so it's it's around 3% uh, which is averagely average it is uh, present in the uh, turmeric and same goes with the multiple uh, this other spices as well in the clove it is around 12% of the vo which is on the higher side uh, because clove uh, if uh, that's why the percentage of uh, uh, you know the clove is very less in in terms of uh, addition of any of the recipe <clears throat> because it is having it is having the high vo content whenever you are adding any spices so it, uh, it is having the dominancy uh, depending on their vo percentage so that's why when we are adding anything in our recipes the clove will be always on the lower percentage because it should not get dominant because if it is getting dominant rest if anything you will not be able to get it right same goes with the maize uh, with the uh, with the green cardamom with the black cardamom that is also having the high vo percentage okay so in the in the fennel and nutmeg it's around 2% to 2.5% and the star anise it's around 4.5% that is also having the uh, high on the higher end so the percentage of the addition in any of the recipe is on the lower side right moving to the next uh, the spices we know what kind of applications are there because uh, uh, everybody is very familiar with the uh, you know usage of the spices we know like mostly nowadays it's it's not like only wife is cooking uh, sometimes husband also will uh, uh, cook you know so everybody in the family knows how spices behave how spices behave in in the normal uh, you know routine so considering the uh, the types of spices what all types are available in the market so it's one we say the straight spices straight spices means single spice it could be in the whole form it could be in the ground form okay then second uh, category is the blended spices so blended spices something which is blended uh, like the multiple spices are added in one product it's called the blended spices like a chicken masala garam masala rajma masala okay tea masala these all comes under the blended spices category so uh, we will discuss on the uh, packaging also in the coming section and next is the seasonings so in the seasonings uh the application and usage uh so seasonings are having the multiple you know it's it's it cannot be covered in uh, uh, in a half an hour or one hour uh, session it's having the multiple applications and to understand each and every every application there is a different structure of the seasoning uh which we develop for specific products for example uh, snack seasoning if i give you the example of snack seasoning uh there are different type of bases are available in the market one is okay multi grain grain bases one is potato chips one is only uh, you know corn base one is only uh, the maize uh, maize base so these kind of i mean different different kind of bases are available uh, which we uh, eat on the regular basis so that snack seasoning 
which works on their basis everything will be having the different structure and different application for, to give that uh, end uh, you know end flavor uh, flavor delivery uh, for example if i give you a quick example whatever you are i mean uh, sprinkling it on on the uh, you know potato chips uh, it will not it will not work or it may not work on the corn chips okay because uh, there the flavor delivery is different because potato as a base is having the uh, you know uh, very blank flavor as a corn corn itself is having some flavors so the flavor delivery you have to adjust if you are giving the similar seasoning as well right and the second is the dry marinades so what are the dry marinades so dry marinades uh, if you eat any of the chicken uh, in the market uh, which is which is fried or which is not fried uh, which is just grilled okay every chicken or everything uh, which if you are having the nuggets also uh, the potato uh, potato nuggets or if you are having the paneer nuggets or if you are having you know the paneer tikka everything will be having the marination so how they do the marination so marination uh, the dry marinade always will be having the structure of uh, uh, of as i told uh, in the starting the salt spices okay some uh, vinegar powders and uh, some flavor enhancers will be there in the marinade which you just have to put uh, put it in the chicken okay and then you marinate with the ginger garlic paste and you add curd in that uh, and you just have to fry it and then you are done you don't have to do anything because this dry marinades makes the life so easy uh, if you eat uh, if you have ever had uh, the dry marinade if i give you the example if you ever had the kfc chicken uh, anything which is available in kfc it is having the dry marinades okay uh, below that coating uh, below the crispy coating which we are uh, seeing always uh, we always have a picture in our mind when we say okay this is a kfc chicken we always have a picture in our mind and what uh, what comes uh, uh, like uh, you know when we are eating it the flavor comes out the flavor always comes out from the marinade of that right not the coating of it coating uh, gives the different appearance coating gives the crunchiness coat, coating maybe gives a little punch uh, but uh, the uh, you know the core heart is always lying with the marinade of the product so that's how the marination works if you eat anything uh, which is uh, soya champ if you are having okay for that also people will be mixing the spices and they will be marinating it and then they have to uh, fry it or grill it that's how the marinade works then the sprinklers uh, so sprinkler if i give you the example uh, on the pizza everybody eats pizza so on pizza whatever we are sprinkling it on oregano or the chili flakes that's that's called the sprinklers but there are multiple sprinklers Uh, which is available in the market uh, uh, if i give you one more example of mcdonalds uh, so we will be having the uh due to some net technical network issue i guess sir has been disconnected from us uh, he will join back soon uh, with we will continue with the same uh, session again uh, meanwhile uh, we will go through some i would first of all there is a link in the description uh, so that you will uh, get to know uh, give us a feedback and the list, this link would be very useful for us to improve in our coming up sessions and uh, to uh, i would like to call upon for tomorrow's uh, webinar uh, there is miss uh, manisha thakur who is going to tell us about uh, ready to heat technology and its industrial applications so this is a very good and uh, innovative topic to be addressed 
uh, like uh, we don't know what is uh, ready to heat technique means uh, what is exactly it so ma'am is going to tell us uh, exactly what it is uh, and okay and meanwhile let's have a look at the uh, comment section yeah i would like to tell you about uh, spice board spice board the spice board is a uh, single own uh, independent regulating body about uh, spices means it uh, handles all the market uh, spice market in india what all the annual record uh, and uh, annual consumption of india has been recorded into spice boards uh, they look about the exports in the uh, spice field and it's uh, totally independent uh, regardless to fscci and uh, other bodies uh, they follow the regulations of fscci but uh, it uh, works individually on um, their own basis uh, it again uh, go through the uh, if the product is to be exported above apart from this uh, india in the abroad so it has to go undergo a spice spice board testing where it uh, confirms that it's uh, uh, good to send to spice uh, a abroad country so let, uh, then uh, even the uh, spice board has uh, i would like to tell about the spice board spice board had uh, have vacancies for food technologists to for the job employment welcome back sir welcome Sorry, got to the a glitch in the network here yeah. Yes, yeah, no issues. Uh, just uh, continue with the same um, slide. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no issue. So coming back to the uh, coming back to the glazes. So glazes. Uh, I was talking. this uh, that also is made from the uh, glazes are always being served uh, with the sauces or it could be served with the seasonings as well uh, so if anybody has ever had the buffalo wings that is always uh, you know is having the glazes uh, on the upper surface so we feel always glazy and little uh, uh, texture uh, when we are biting it so that's how the uh, seasonings work with the glazes you can add in the sauces or you can make the glazes a uh, seasoning with adding in the curd or the uh, ginger and garlic and then you can apply on the chicken so it will give the glazy texture uh, to the final application right and next is a noodle seasoning uh, i am 100% sure everybody must have had the maggi noodles or the yippee noodles or uh, you know any sort of noodles which is present in the market uh, so noodles are having the seasoning inside it that's uh, also is having the different uh, uh, structure uh so noodles uh, should have you know the certain uh, noodle seasoning should have certain starches could be uh, inside that so then uh, then it can give you you know the uh, thickness to the final product once you are boiling the noodles if it is if it is uh, you know coming out as a watery texture how you will like you will not like it it should be little thick so the pro, uh, you know the complete profile should get gel in with the noodles and you will be able to enjoy it right and the next is the oats uh, nowadays many companies are promoting uh, oats which is having the certain uh, flavors inside it uh, when i say the flavors it's it's uh, the seasoning which they adding in the oats so once you are uh, you know cooking it uh, you will get the different kind of uh, profiles like uh, for example you must have seen the pav bhaji oats you must have seen the seswan oats or the manchurian oats in the market okay these all are the flavor oats which is in the to uh, satisfy the breakfast solutions yeah people can have it any time because as as uh, nowadays as a trend is going towards uh, you know the healthy uh, healthy solutions or uh, healthy cuisines we say so people are more preferring which is uh, where the bases are also towards the healthy like oats we know that oats is always healthy because it's having the more dietary fibers inside that it will give the more digestion it gives the uh, good immunity but yes once you're having something with the uh, little flavor inside it you will be able to enjoy it rather than just having the oats yeah and then the soup mixes 
uh, soup mixes again uh, last but not the least uh, soups are very popular in the market and uh, you will be uh, getting the two type of soups uh, presently uh, which is one is a instant soup and second is a cook up soup so once you are adding that in the boiled water uh, you will be getting the instant soup okay that's uh, how is very popular nowadays and the second you just have to cook it which is uh, the stove top you say uh, that you just have to cook it for uh, three to four minutes and you're done you can enjoy the soup so that's the soup mixes are available in the market and uh, there are many more seasonings like many more applications and uh, it's it's a very vast subject uh, to cover in yeah so moving to the next uh, slide uh, it says about the sensory valuation so as uh, we discussed in the previous slide uh, it's seasoning and the spices it's all about the sensory evaluation when you're doing any development so whenever we do the development it's very very uh, critical uh, for us to understand that which scale the this product is uh, you know standing so it is more having the core color the aroma the texture the spiciness the umami the sourness sweetness how much salt is there in that okay uh, salt of course you can titrate also you will get it but yes the more you are tasting the products the more you will uh, you will be able to understand uh the more in the per, the specific percentage of the product also you will be able to understand it it comes with the experience only so here i just have taken the example of a masala seasoning which is uh, uh, i don't want to disclose the company's name but it's a one masala seasoning which uh, uh, we have we have done the sensory evaluation and that is how we do the uh, analysis okay what is the acceptability average acceptability it's around 7.8 so if you see what 7.8 says it's it's near to very uh, like very much okay so we like this uh, profile very much because it is having the balance in everything it is uh, it is uh, salty good enough salty it's having the good level of sweetness as well because when you are adding the salt you have to add the sugar as well or you have to add the sweetness as well in the savory products to balance it out right and sourness also it gives the uh, balance in the final product when you're having it uh, in actual right umami also is uh, you know the uh, sixth flavor what what you will be able to understand on your tongue that which creates uh, the uh, the saliva on your tongue and you will feel much much better than the any other products while consuming right so uh, to creating the umami there are many multiple ingredients are there uh, to create the umami how you can create it there are uh, certain ingredient and certain percentage are recommended to add it uh, on with that you will achieve the uh, specific umami right and this is a level 1 so as i was telling uh, if you are beginner so you have to uh, concentrate on this scale uh, eat more and eat, uh, the more you will understand the more you are eating the more you will understand in your mind okay this is the level of spiciness is how much you know the level of uh, sweetness is how much because color and aroma uh, color you will understand uh, visually and how the texture is you will understand you know why uh, by checking it physically or you can just uh, take the spoon up and if it's a noodles it how it looks while texture whether it's a thick or it's a watery aroma uh, and the you know the taste it takes time it it takes little time for uh, everybody to understand uh, when we are uh, we are doing the sensory evaluation so here the my recommendation is the more you will uh, eat and the more you are eating the more you will understand all the profile right so this is the second uh, level 2 uh, evaluation so in level 2 you are going in the more depth uh, you are going in the more depth where uh, you have to understand okay if this is the product it it is having the ginger profile it is having the garlic profile it is having the chili profile it is having the coriander in coriander also two ways are there where it's a coriander fresh which is uh, added in that or it's a brown coriander which is added in that and then the cumin is there sugar percentage is how much whether it's a balanced or it's on the higher note or it's on the lower note uh, lower note uh, how is the onion profile onion because onion gives a sweetness to the end product right so how it is it is uh, coming in the final product whether it's balanced or it's on the lower side or it's on the higher side 
right so like this way you have to uh, make your own chart uh, and uh, you will understand that whether the product what you are doing the testing uh, you are doing the sensory where it is falling because these are this is as i told this is the masala seasoning uh, which uh, we have done the evaluation uh, so this is the masala seasoning so masala is having these kind of top notes so these are the top notes which uh, is there which you will consume it and you will get fast all these things uh, and from coming from level 1 to level 2 of course it, it takes you know around 3 to 4 years when you are having it back to back the more you will have the more you will understand uh, all depend on the sensory uh, you know the how quick the person is uh, to learn about the sensory you know the more you will smell it the more you will understand so that's how uh, we can judge the product and we rate the product in terms of the sensory evaluation so moving to the next yeah so uh, here we are going to discuss about the industrial process that how this uh, in the in the industries that how they are making the spices how it is getting manufactured so here i have taken uh, the process of uh, blended spices so how it is getting manufactured i will uh, describe you in in a bit of uh, detail like how seasoning is getting uh, you know what the difference we are doing in the to manufacture the seasonings also but yes there is no major difference uh, so covering from the uh, first step so once uh, industries are receiving the raw material and packaging material they will do the testing for that okay they will do the testing as per the defined standards so every industry will be having uh, the defined standards which uh, uh, they will follow from the fssai which they will make it internally and then they will follow it so it's in our own hand fssai is mandatory but you can you know uh, follow more and more uh, standards you can make as per your company norms as well okay then for the raw material uh, we do the fumigation Uh, uh mostly like companies uh, does the fumigation for 24 hours so uh, the recommended uh, fumigation is uh, uh, by the methyl bromide so methyl bromide is a gas which uh, uh, is recommended to uh, for the spices uh, you can use this methyl bromide uh, to fumigate the spices so there is a standard for that it's a 32 g per cubic meter so more than that you cannot use right uh, because fumigation you do so the spices should not get in uh, infestation to avoid the infestation the uh, fumigation is uh, recommended right then because you will be going to store it for certain time uh, because uh, let's say you have uh, you know procured some 10 metric ton but you have the uh, you have the production planning for one metric ton so nine metric ton which you are storing in your warehouse it should be safe enough Uh, till the time it is getting exhausted so that's why the fumigation is recommended right and then coming to the uh, step number 5 is the cleaning and sorting so we do uh, we take the whole spices uh, then we do the sorting of that uh, so normally like in companies uh, there will be a manual sorting so you will be taking it out uh, the foreign particles if something is there like uh, any kind of foreign particle you have to remove it by the manual sorting then oven drying is there so uh, normally uh, and drying temperature the more temperature you are giving the loss of the vo will be on the higher side so uh, it's always recommended to give uh, from 70 to 82 degree temperature uh, where the product will get dried also so you can grind the product without any uh, clogging and uh, uh, you will be able to save the vo as well so it is uh, uh, from 70 to 82 degree for 2 to 4 hours uh, you can use for because every every uh, spice will be having the different uh, time and temperature for the oven drying right so then uh, the grinding process comes in the picture the as a seventh step uh, so before grinding before putting anything into the machine uh, you have to make sure that product is not having any metal contamination so you have to pass it through the magnets so magnets are um, multiple magnets are there but uh, it's always uh, good better to use which is having that uh, 12000 gauss power so with that gauss power only uh, the magnet will be able to attract the iron particles so your machine will not get affected 
by any matter contamination right so uh, there is a grinding uh, which takes place always there is a recommend uh, there is a recommendation for the cryogenic grinding so why we say the cryogenic grinding cryogenic grinding uh, will not uh, you know will not let the product increase the temperature while grinding so you will be able to save as much as vo because it will be having with the nitrogen flush and the C, uh, co2 uh, when you do the grinding the temperature will be on the quite lower side so you will be able to save the essential oils and the vo in the product so because if it is harshly getting grinded the loss of the vo uh, and the essential oils will be on the higher side right so then there are certain treatments uh, uh, which companies does uh considering the microbiological load because uh, spices are the ground products so it is having it is having the uh, microbiological load by nature itself right so companies does the eto treatment eto is the ethyl uh, treatment ethyl oxide or steam sterilization to reduce the microbiological load so uh, once they are uh, doing it then they will uh, take the product further for the blending so again uh, uh, before blending as well again uh, they will do the magnet pass so that in the blender also nothing should go so blenders usually uh, as you can see in the picture uh, rubber blenders are always recommended uh, for the spices or the seasoning production because rubber blender will give you uh, the uniform flavor delivery because once it is getting uh, once it is getting completely rubbed with the wall then it will get more blended right it will get properly blended there are two type of blenders if i just tell you quickly uh, one is a paddle blend blender one is the ribbon blender which uh, generally we use for the spice industry ribbon uh, ribbon is always recommended for the powders and uh, paddle is recommended for the whole spices when you are handling something whole so if you are handling the whole and when you are putting it in the ribbon it will get crush okay so that's why the paddle blenders are recommended for the whole spices right after the blending then comes the sieving so sieving is a very critical uh, uh, step sorry so in the sieving there are multiple uh, particle sizes which you can give uh, there are uh, there are certain standard particle size which you can uh, provide to the final product and of course uh, uh, sieving will give you the uniform particle size when it is getting sieved whatever the collection is happening so that's the uniform particle size right and whatever the over is coming that uh, will come as a retention right and the uh, it will also help you to uh, uh, avoid the contamination from the foreign matter uh, foreign matter as well right then after sieving the, uh, the another ccp comes which is the metal detection metal detection uh, catches the ferrous non ferrous and the uh, ss which is uh, which cannot be uh, you know uh, if it is a uh, if it is uh, passing through the magnet but yes it will not uh, pass through the metal detector so metal detector is having the uh, power to catch uh, 0.85 mm ferrous and non ferrous is 1.2 mm and ss is 2 mm okay so uh, more than that whatever is coming that is digestible as per the uh, us fda okay so these are the particles which uh, uh less than that is uh, uh, is 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 will not uh, make you any harm will not make any harm to the human body right and uh, next step comes for the qc clearance and the microbiological testing so once the product is getting tested in the quality as per the uh, recommended parameters we will discuss in the coming slides uh, then the product will get clear uh, from the production and it will go uh, for the packaging and the uh, primary packaging and the secondary packaging right then the storage and dispatch will happen for uh, the fg for the storage also there are multiple things whether uh, you are storing uh, as per the batches or you are storing as per uh, the lot size so there are different uh, ways of storage also every company is having the different uh, way of uh, uh, the doing the things so uh, some companies follow the batch number some company follow the per day production so then they will define it as a batch numbers some company follow the per shift production right so every company is having their own standards uh, only thing it should be traceable whatever standards you are making in the food industry so moving to the next 
as we have discussed uh, uh, for the qc clearance what kind of testing is recommended for spices and uh, uh, seasonings also there are visual parameters uh, visual parameters of physical appearance the taste and aroma granule test okay moisture percentage by mass uh, that is uh, that uh, that comes under the physical parameters and uh, you have to check as per the uh, as per the guidelines given by the fssai uh standards okay there are there is a manual to analyze uh the spices and condiments there are diff, uh, there are standard para uh, there are standard uh, uh you know uh testing sops which uh, that only you have to follow to make sure that uh, whatever testing you are doing it is uh it, it is true and it's as per the fssa standards then there uh, it comes the chemical parameters where you check the total ash acid and soluble ash volatile oil non volatile oil you will check crude fiber you will check uh, the sho you will check the scolave index we say then the color unit color unit you can check uh, through the uh, the uh, this unit is asked and you can check it through the hunter lab and these are the parameter uh, these are the methods which you can follow uh, to do the testing of this and next comes the microbiological uh, parameters in the microbiological parameter there are two ways uh, to do either uh, you can do it in house or you can uh, you know take any facility uh, any uh, you can tie up with any external lab and then you can do the testing over there as well for the uh, before releasing the batch so there are uh, standard microbiological parameters which you have to follow Uh, for the spices okay it's it comes the salmonella uh, salmonella is the major one and uh, of course it's a pathogen so that only is uh, uh, so when you do the any treatment so let me just get back on that uh, slide which we discussed on the uh, treatments uh, when you do the treatment and uh, when you validate your treatment whether when you doing the eto or you doing the uh, steam sterilization what is your target pathogen so always in the spices there is a salmonella which is a which is your target pathogen to kill that salmonella once that is absent in 25 gram then your product is safe rest everything will get cleared in that right then uh, the tpc is there then coliform is there e coli yeast and mold so these five are the uh, standard uh, microbiological parameter which you have to check in the spices and this three uh, next three components which are the uh, crop contamination heavy metals and the pesticide residue so this is recommended to check twice in a year you can adopt the external uh, uh, external facility uh, external lab sorry you can adopt the external lab and you can do the testing twice in a year for every product it is recommended right if you are uh, doing for the batches also Uh, so you have to justify that in the twice in a year once in a six months you are uh, doing these uh, all testing from the external lab even uh, whatever you are doing internally also that also you have to uh, test it twice in a year from external lab whether it's a chemical parameters or it's a, a physical parameter or it's a microbiological parameter you have to do it uh, as per the fssa standards twice in a year uh, to make sure whatever testing you are doing it is complying uh, with the standard <clears throat> so moving to the next uh, about the packaging material uh, what is the compatible packaging material for spices and seasonings as you see, uh, see in the pictures so there are different type of packaging materials so one is a canister one is the mono carton third is the pet bottle uh, fourth is the glass bottle okay so multiple products are having the multiple uh, packaging materials but only thing when we are defining the packaging material we have to do the shelf life study uh, to make sure that product is compatible with the packaging material and vice versa right so for the seasonings uh, seasonings uh, are always safe in the glass bottles uh, multiple seasoning you would have seen in the market uh like there are n number of companies are making the seasonings so when when, when you are make uh, when companies are packing it so glass is the first prefer, uh, preference because glass is having uh, the more uh, you know the stability uh, than the any other packaging material right so that's why the glass is recommended 
and the nowadays pet also is getting common you know uh, in the pet because it is easy to handle in the glass always there is a, a fragile logo you have to put on your cart and the handling is little difficult but in the pet nothing like that it's it's a uh, reasonably uh, economical and uh, it's it's available in the different uh, you know specifications the pet and it's easy to handle as well you can even give a more uh, finishing on the uh, pet bottles or pet jars whatever you say and the third is a canister canister which you see in the italian pizza original that's called the canister it is made out of the paper plus hdp cap okay so that is have that also is having the very attractive uh, uh, packaging many companies are using that and uh, uh, many companies are having uh, you know the cap is a very uh, the beneficial in this in terms of the sprinkle on in terms of the uh, when you are adding it something so multiple uh, bottles are having the multiple caps one will be the sprinkler one will be the uh, just add on you can take the scoop out of it right like that so uh, like this way it uh, uh, it make a difference in the seasoning when you talk about the packaging material and for the spices for the spices nowadays the uh, flexible pouches are very popular okay uh, like uh, if you see the many spices many blended spices all the or the straight spices or the uh, any powder spices ground spices available in the pouches which is a pillow pouch we say and uh, depending on the requirement and uh, uh, depending on the uh, you know the shelf life which they want to give they will define uh, the layers of the packaging material the layers of the pouch uh, so the option one uh, which they consider it's the, is the polyester or um, metallic polyester plus ldpe that's the three layers comes uh, and the second is the second option which is the bopp and the ldpe okay and the third is the bopp metallized polyester then uh, ldpe this is again the three layer but the specification is different all this packaging material is having the different uh, shelf life okay something which will give you uh, the 6 months something which will give you the one year something which will give you the 18 months so it depend all depend on the layers and the how much micron is given in that layer so so that's for that we have to do the study and we have to make sure that product will uh, stay on the shelf for that much time for the polyester and uh, uh, aluminum foil is there in that it, it's of course uh, very stable one uh, which will be having in, again uh, they will be having the mono carton for the looking good as you can say in that veg uh, dum biryani it's having the mono carton so it looks good when it is on the shelf okay it is not uh, like a pillow pouch it gives a little attractive look so customer also will feel to pick it and the uh, last is which is again common in the spice it is a pet and uh, which is little cheaper uh, in the price it's a polyester which is 10 to uh, 12 micron with the bopp based on the laminate and generally it's most popular in the spice packaging okay uh, which you uh, which you see the spices or blended spices which is uh, quite you know common and uh, quite uh, economical in price there the packaging material also will be on the uh, lower one right because uh, package here the packaging material is more costly than the product right so uh, like this way companies will maintain their uh, uh, their costing and then they will uh, uh, you know work on the packaging material to reduce it to, to or to make it attractive so what are the advantages uh, for this uh, for the compatible packaging material uh, as we know if you are uh, if you are adding uh, if you are adding honey in uh, uh, maybe in you know pp bag it may not work right or if you are adding the mayonnaise uh, in the normal normal bottle which is not uh, which is a pp bottle again okay it will not work sometimes it will not work it will not behave the way it should behave in the another packaging materials or maybe if you are adding to the hot sauces in in the lower pet bottles when you are heating it it is not heat uh, heat stable uh, packaging material so again it will not work so like this way the compatibility of the packaging material is very much uh, uh, required so uh, we have to understand which for which product what uh, packaging material is there so accordingly we have to do the studies as well so what are the advantages it it offers a product protection against the microbial spoilage 
it are uh, you know which are which occurs due to the environmental condition like humidity temperature light or oxygen so packaging material should be intact when you are uh, packing any any food product inside it should be intact well intact so that outer environment should not affect on inside the product right and compatible packaging material help to resist against heat to avoid rancidity and prevent loss of volatile oil and flavors uh, see if we, uh, if you see in the uh, in the spices what the crunch we have discussed it's all about the vo content it's all about the vo content what is present in the uh, spices so if the uh, packaging material is not uh, uh, is not compatible it will definitely affect on the uh, flavor profile it will definitely affect on the vo content and it can cause the rancidity as well right then uh, the packaging material should be compatible uh, so it should resist the pickup of foreign odors uh, if you are keeping the packaging material somewhere and it is having you know the bad aroma in that uh, room still it should not pick up that bad aroma it should be that much intact right or the infestation it should be uh, strict to the infestation and of course the packaging material the more attractive it is the more uh, you know it gives that confidence to the customer to buy it right and packaging material is mandatory to comply with the labeling standards uh, which is defined by fssci and the packaging communities as well right and of course the compatible packaging material will give you the better shelf life right so let's discuss about the shelf life how we determine the shelf life and how we define the shelf life so in the spices the there are four factors okay uh, spices shelf life is defined uh, it's determined by four factors main four factors one is the uh, uh, volatility temperature surface area and storage containers okay so this is very uh, these four factors you have to consider when you are defining the shelf life uh, for the spices because as i told the more surface area of the product the more risk of the product okay in the more it is compact the risk will be on the lower side so once it is getting grounded you have to give the extra care uh, to that product uh, uh, to uh, you know safeguard from the uh, outer environments okay so then uh, there is a uh, excellent shelf life studies method uh, to determine and, and define the actual shelf life for the product so i have uh, given a table over here so there is a one complete equation which uh, uh, normally i follow uh, how we define the shelf life uh, there is a proper uh, equation for that so i just uh, taken a glimpse over here so you will be able to understand in the shelf life study uh, because you know shelf life study is a, it's a product specific first we should understand that it's a product specific uh, it can be complex okay uh, as per the uh, as per the product category if it's a spices it is uh, it's a different way of doing or if it's a sauces there's a different way of doing it right water activity uh, values can be critical aspect for the most shelf life studies as you know uh, the water activity uh, is a free water free water vapor which is present in the product and that's called the water activity and moisture is the water content which is present in the product that's called the moisture so water activity uh, is very less in terms of spices so normally uh, normally for the water the water activity is one but for the spices it it comes around less than 0.6 if i'm not wrong it comes around uh, less than that so the product is uh, first itself is very safe it's very on the safer side but you have to make sure that uh, you have to uh, make sure you have to do the study uh, for that certain time to uh, you know give that uh, shelf life on the shelf when it is in the market when it is uh, in your retail shop when it is in the modern trade or it's in the ac room or, or wherever the product you are selling so you have to make sure that you are doing that certain uh, weeks of shelf life which will uh, define the shelf life of the actual product when it is on the outer environment so there are the if you see there is a uh, degree celsius so you consider the degree celsius and the one year shelf life equal uh, equivalency so if you are doing on the 35 degree celsius so you have to do it for 21 weeks 21.1 weeks uh, to get the one year shelf life on the normal temperature ambient temperature is a 22 degree celsius which we consider but if it is in the more as you know uh, the in india the 
states are having the more uh, some states are having the even higher temperature some states are having the you know it comes around 40 degree as well uh, in the summers so we have to define in such a way right the most accurate is uh, when you do uh, the studies on 40 degree celsius when you do on the 40 degree celsius you will be doing almost for 15 weeks which will give you the uh, shelf life for the one year so uh, for 40 uh, for 40 years uh, for, for sorry for 40 degree celsius when you are doing the shelf life for 15 years it will give you give you one uh, uh, you know one cycle which you have to multiply with that equation i will be able to uh, share uh, whoever uh, will be required for uh, that equation i will be able to share that uh, so on uh, uh, on on specific uh, these 14.9 weeks if you are doing it uh, continuously for 40 degree and you have to take care of the humidity as well humidity is also uh, equally important in terms of the spices so you have to give the certain humidity and certain temperature to achieve the one year of shelf life study when it goes to the equivalency right and the second uh, which was recommended uh, uh, for the where the water activity is on the higher side uh, when we say on the higher side it means which is more than 0.75 where there you can uh, do it the shelf life study uh, on 55 degree celsius as well where you have to conduct for the 5 uh, 5.3 weeks and it will give you the shelf life for the one year right so this is how we uh, determine and define the shelf life of the spices so uh, that's all uh, we can uh, move to the question and answers uh, praful yeah praful yeah this session uh, question and answer session again so today uh, i guess we have a pledge please in the chat box uh, am i audible to you yeah yeah i am i am able to hear you yeah yeah great uh yeah just stop sharing this uh, um, slide if possible so that we only will be seen on the screen so that people will get interactive more everybody please uh, drop your uh, start dropping your queries unless you are not yet dropped because i guess uh, there are many queries in the comment section today uh okay today we'll start with uh, vijay mise uh the seasoning shelf life is depend on sorry for the item get your question uh the seasoning shelf life is dependent on see the uh, for the seasoning shelf life again you have to do the excellent shelf life studies for that also uh so once you are doing the uh, excellent shelf life study you will be able to understand that how product is behaving because how it is in the spices uh, in the seasoning it is uh, more or less similar but seasonings are having the liquid components as well which gives the more risk to the product so once you are uh, once you are making the seasoning so you have to do the shelf life study in the final packet where you are going to do see for seasonings uh, uh, some uh, some of the seasoning as i told we will be applying on the snacks we will be applying on the noodles we will be applying on the chicken so whatever the final application is you have to do the shelf life study for that okay uh next is in noodles or maggi what does the seasoning contain other than spices like do do they uh, do the seasoning contain anti caking thickness other additives yes uh, see anti caking and all uh, is uh, Uh, it's allowed and it's recommended uh, to add in the seasonings because the seasonings are having the as i told just before uh, seasonings are having the certain liquid components as well which uh, which are having the tendency to get moist over the period of time so one, once you're adding the uh, anti caking agent it will absorb the moisture of the product and it will increase it will increase it will help to increase the shelf life of the product okay yeah uh excuse me sir can you stop the sharing option oh. sharing share screen yeah yeah okay next question is uh, is it possible to have single component seasoning if yes do we need to do the level of 2 for sensory evolution i'm not getting single com 
a single component seasoning is never but never be the seasoning it it will be the spice only yeah if you're adding any single it's ingredient right. it's not the seasoning seasoning is uh, is very complex as such uh, when we are developing it is having the multiple different uh, functional ingredients as well which we are adding in the seasoning to make it as a seasonings yeah, yeah. next is new noodles they have enhancer stabilizer anti aging etc okay this yeah. is answer sorry uh, if any effect of fumigation on seasoning and on human fumigation sorry i don't i don't get you your uh, your fading uh, profilia uh, any effect after fumigation on seasoning and on human health health you are not doing the fumigation on the seasoning you are doing the fumigation on the raw material yeah okay when you are receiving some spices on that you are doing the fumigation and fumigation is all only uh, advisable to do on the spices not on any other of the ingredient like which are non spices like salt sugar or like anti aging agent or you know the flavor enhancers or anything uh, like the starches you cannot do on that so it is not advisable to do okay so like uh, post fumigation what is the shelf life of the spices average post, uh, yeah post fumigation so fumigation we are doing uh, to stop the multiplication for the infestation so we have to understand here when we talk about the fumigation we are talking about the infestation part not the microbiological part okay so infestation and microbiological two are the different uh, uh, you know things so when uh, something we are talking on the storage then okay we have to do the fumigation for the raw material okay uh, next is how many times we can fumigate one spice once is recommended to fumigate because once you are recommending it of course it will stay uh, quite longer time you will be able to consume it okay again and again fumigation is not recommended okay okay uh what is the recent trends in seasoning sorry come again a uh, recent trend in seasoning <laughs> like recent trends if i talk it's it's a it's a very uh, you know broad way to answer it uh, yeah. maybe i required one more uh, you know hour to answer that <laughs> the trend uh, of the seasonings yeah Yeah. So the, there are multiple seasoning and many uh, many new trends are coming in. Uh, trends when we say uh, as uh, I have told, like considering the now uh, the present scenario, so people uh, and companies are of course uh, you know making the healthy seasonings which can give you the immunity, which can uh, you know uh, you know increase your uh, immunity, which will give you the more uh, strength. So that kind of seasonings are more in the trend uh, considering the present scenario. okay uh next question uh, is for export where it takes 15 to 30 days how can the seasoning be prevented from formation of lumps the uh, formation of the lumps will not happen in 15 to 20 days if you are doing the proper production because it's all depend on the process it's all yeah. depend on the process aid how you are giving it what kind of steps you are following it in the seasoning and uh, whether you are adding the anti caking agent and what the percentage you are adding so it all depend on that right but okay. in the 15 to 13 days 30 days nothing is going to happen to the seasoning if you if the if the storage practices are good okay if you are storing somewhere where the humidity and the moisture is already on the higher side okay or the temperature is also on the higher side then of course the tendency of uh, getting lump is more and what are the what is the packaging material whether it's 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 a durable i mean it's a resistible for uh, uh, you know against the lumps formation or against the uh, uh, you know moisture how much it is preventing it all depend on that so there are multiple factors but uh, the first comes is the processing and second comes the packaging material okay uh, next is what is the recommended otr and wvtr of spice packaging material so there are so see, there are is explain what is otr and i'm not uh, everybody will uh, knowing well otr and wvtr see uh, profile there are uh, different kind of uh, things otr is the uh, oxygen transmission rate okay, okay. Uh, oxy, uh, oxygen transmission rate 
and uh, uh, normally in the packaging material uh, normally when we say the packaging material uh, aluminium is having aluminium foil and glass is having the uh, good otr okay the oxygen transmission rate is very low in terms of that packaging material so that's why when uh, when some uh, any of the product is uh, uh, is having the uh, moisture okay any of the product is having the liquid content then the aluminium giving the aluminium foil uh, layer in the packaging material it's always uh, best okay uh, so what is the recommended for otr and wtr for spice material recommended sorry what is the recommended otr and wtr of spices packaging material see there are again i'm telling there are different all depend on the spices because uh, multiple uh, spices are having the different uh, kind of nature okay so it varies uh, spice to spice we cannot uh, define in the in a one way okay next is at what water activity salmo salmonella survives <laughs> salmonella survives uh, uh, in the lower water activity because salmonella when we say uh, 0.6 to 0.5 uh, is the average water activity of the spice that's why we are not adding any uh, preservatives to make the product stable right so salmonella of course will st uh, stay where the water activity is on the lower side Okay, okay, but of course it will be on the higher uh, water activity as well. It will be available in the sauces also. But in sauces, there is a di different pathogen which we consider as a Clostridium botulism. That is the for the sauces. But for the lower activity, uh, lower water activity, Salmonella, it will of course survive 0.5 also. Okay, sir. Uh, next is which shelf life study is better for the new development food product like accelerated shelf life study or the other any shelf life study please explain see the other shelf life study is the uh, straight shelf life study we say uh, you are keeping the product on the ambient temperature uh, whatever the room temperature uh, you are keeping but again the room temperature will vary you know uh, if let's say uh, somebody is uh, staying in uh, uh, himachal okay in himachal okay. pradesh somebody is staying where the temperature uh, in night time it, it goes very low yeah okay so the product will be uh, product will be having the more uh, safe condition when it is on the lower temperature okay. right so uh, the fluctuation in that in the temperature in the day time from the day to night it's it's very high so that's why we recommend to do it in the incubator uh, or do it in the stability chamber where the, where you can control the temperature uh, from 37 to 40 degree celsius and you can control the relative humidity as well Yes, sir. Uh, which type of packaging material is used for delicate spices like uh, saffron? Uh, saffron is not delicate spice. It's it's a uh, it's very uh, stable spice. But yes, when when you are uh, packing something, the pet is recommended for that. Okay, in pet because uh, uh, we in the in the market also we have seen uh, the saffron is available in the small. Uh, uh, packets, which is usually it is available in the pet. So pet is uh, the safer one, but it should be the hard plastic. It should not be the normal pet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next is, does seasoning cause allergic reaction? Seasoning can cause allergic reaction if somebody is having the allergy from uh, any of the uh, any of the allergens. Let's say uh, if seasoning is ha seasonings uh, will be having the allergens like uh, soya bean. okay like uh, any nuts like uh, if any uh, uh, if somebody is having any fish seasoning okay that will be having some fish flavors okay so it it can cause allergy if somebody is uh, uh, having if somebody is allergic to that if i am allergic yeah. to lactose okay and i am consuming the milk of course i know that i should not consume the milk if some seasonings are having the milk inside it we should not consume that so uh, whatever seasoning you are buying from market or you are buying from uh, uh, restaurants nowadays like everybody is uh, uh, maintaining as per the legal statement uh, it's a, it's a uh, you know defined law by the fssai if any allergen is there any product they have to highlight it okay yeah uh, next is is there any daily limitation in spice consumption spices consumption 
yeah there is a there is nothing like that the spice consumption but uh, uh, always having a spicy food spicy when we say it's all depend on the it's all comes from the chili okay or it may be comes from uh, the uh, the peppers or it may be comes from the ginger which are pungent in nature but if you see uh, the ginger and garlic it gives the more immunity to the product i mean no, more immunity to the body right so that is recommended to have but yes the more uh, chili consumption it's of course it depend on the people to people so person to person it varies uh, for for me the consumption of chili is very less okay uh, because i cannot tolerate much chili but maybe some people uh, those are staying in especially in andhra they are they are very uh, you know uh, they are very uh, like familiar or you can say they are very good to have the chili contents the more spicy a chili they can have it they don't have any issue right so it all depend on the person to person yeah uh, like uh, next is sir according to you what are the most exported spices produced in india see there are multiple uh, spices which uh, our country is exporting to the uh, multiple co- countries uh, if i say uh, the nutmeg okay uh, the green cardamom the black cardamom the mace okay and the uh, i mean some till some extent pepper also but pepper is available in- but yes in uh, in south india or in the some part of the uh, east it is it is available okay uh, next is uh, this person is uh, asking how can we adulterate straight spices it's a uh, very to adulterate <laughs> he is i think he is intentionally want to adulterate something <laughs> but no, no, uh, can... uh, according to food technology i would like to how can we identify uh, the straight spices adulterated yeah. in the powder yeah. granulation form yes there are multiple ways Ground to uh, yeah there are multiple ways to identify uh, if you are having the lab then of course we can identify in the lab with the multiple equipments but yes at the home side when you are sitting at home and you don't have the equipment so there are uh, there are uh, uh, you know i i did this session in my team also a uh, couple of weeks back uh there are certain videos which uh, i have uploaded on uh, youtube and it is there also uh, by fssc also it is given uh, so how to check the adulteration in chili how to check the adulteration in uh, turmeric okay how to check the adulteration in pepper so that you just browse browse it on the youtube you will get the uh, link from fssci and you can see that how simple ways uh, for example if i give you for the chili flakes uh chili flakes if you are putting in the water hot water if it is having the color it will it will you will be able to see that uh, uh, color formation in the water okay same goes with the chili if chili is having the color any color is added inside the chili it will separate out in the water okay right so there yeah, are yeah. i mean it's available on the youtube yeah okay sir uh the last question how quantitative analysis of volatile oil is carried out uh, please give brief of its principles see there is a uh, there is a titration method uh, to check the vo uh, so if you want i can uh, uh, you know share that sop if uh, somebody want i can email that or they can just email me i can share that sop so it will be the uh, better uh, for them because like this way i will not be able to make them understand okay sir Yeah. that was a great interaction again and in the com- uh, question answer session and even the yeah. presentation was too good uh, it was very right. uh, knowledgeable and simple to understand and you explained it very well uh, in the uh, industrial view manner also and uh, much, yeah. yeah what all the trends going on in the spice field can you short uh, shortly tell us what is the, the- spice market today uh, how is it working spice, mar- see, spice market is uh, having the Uh, you know the huge competition if i say uh, spice market is having the huge competition but yes the companies are surviving those are giving the best quality spices one thing yes yes okay those are giving the consistent product okay those are uh, having the stable product and those the products are tasting good your customer wants what 
in the end they want the flavor profile that how this chicken masala taste yeah. how this biryani taste yeah. how this pav bhaji taste what they want the taste they want of course right so the trend is that quality in the taste that in the in terms of uh, product in terms of uh, you know the flavor delivery if you are giving it of course people will love it yeah yes. but yes nowadays uh, nowadays as i told earlier also in spices also many companies are introducing as as a uh, spices uh, the mix of the spices which gives you uh, as a you know immunity booster or like the immunity for the uh, when you are consuming it it gives the immunity it will boost your immunity so many spices uh, many spice companies are coming into that uh, trend as well okay okay so that was a very good session with very great pleasure yeah. to interact with you and we are very glad that you gave us a your valuable time and knowledge you have given us pleasure, pleasure today. is all mine yeah yes. yeah yeah and uh, so i, yeah, I would will... like to share share my contact if uh, uh, you allow me for a second if somebody want uh, uh, to approach yeah Uh, so i just kept that in the last so if somebody yes, want uh, they can email me uh, so i can uh, you know uh, uh, some questions i can answer them uh, over there as well yes sir yes sir no issues and even there is a link in the feedback section for the participants if you have any feedback please drop us we will uh, yes. for, forward it to you the speaker too and for us also for any improvement points for the coming up webinars please uh, participants everybody give your valuable feedbacks and contact sir for any kind of uh, spice related query they will uh, definitely answer you at uh, any point of moment yes yeah thank you so much sir job for joining us all right we thank would like to invite time. you for the coming up sessions too uh, we would like to have your guidance in uh, many of uh, forward looking for this time so whatever i am learning i will be able to tell <laughs> yeah 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 thank you so much and uh, uh, any message for the covid situation uh see covid situation we have to live with the covid yeah. so that's what uh, it's it's uh, difficult to say that when it will get end because uh, 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 we cannot predict i mean some predictions are there but uh, we don't know when how how to believe on that the, on the predictions but yes the good thing is uh, uh, just uh, keep the hygiene maintain keep the social distancing maintain of course we will live through with that okay we have to uh, you know overcome this situation okay sir thank you so much for giving this uh, valuable knowledge again and again i'm saying thank you for this yeah. uh, thank you thank, thank you prof leya thank you for inviting yeah. me it was a great interaction with you yeah thank you so much all right thank you